Alrighty, good afternoon everyone and welcome to Napoli, Italy, where today we're doing the Ryan Air Flight 874. And uh, you might think, wait a minute, Ryan Air, does that mean... Yes, it means we are in a 737. Um, I got my hand on the Zebu 737, of course. This is the 737 that we're going to use. And the Ryan Air livery comes as standard. It's, it's already there. Uh, in reality, this flight is done by... Malta Air or something, something like that, I think is not that important. I'm not really interested in the maximum amount of reality today because I want to do this flight first in X-Plane and after that we're doing the same flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator with the PMDG 737-800 and then we can compare these two. Now the Ryanair Flight 874 takes us from Napoli here to uh, Torino. Um, I got my sim brief set up and the files downloaded. Now if I remember correctly, you can use the downloaded files directly in the FMC, but we're going to see how this works. And before we get started, two things. One, you have to forgive me, I've been in the 737 for a very long time, so I'm going to do a lot of stupid shit. It's also a good thing to check the planes, like how easy can you get back into it or into it? How much do they help you? And the second thing is that I solved my thrust lever problem. Now I got my hands on the Thrustmaster Boeing Throttle Quadrant and the cool thing about that is that you have three axes that you can configure whichever way you want. And I used the center axis for the thrust of both engines. So there are no separate engine thrust levers anymore. I have one for both and this should solve my lever asymmetry problem once and for all, at least in the Boeing here. I also got a new um, throttle, uh, the, the centerpiece for the throttle port and for the Airbus. Um, I hope this works better now, um, but for the Boeing, I'm using this one. And as you can see there, I can move both with one axis and that's pretty good. Um, the rest of the throttle quadrant is set up the way it is in the real plane. Like on the right side, I have my flaps. But it's continuous, it does not have the nine discrete detents as the real thing has. Yeah, if you like move it correctly, it's not, not, not really a problem to set the specific flaps, flap setting that you want. Um, and on the left side is the uh, speed brake, of course. And um, yeah, yes, welcome back to the 737 or welcome to the 737 at all on my channel. I never had a 737, and, but it's for me, it's a welcome back. I use the 737 a lot with X-Plane 11, but that was a very, very long time ago. So um, yeah, um, I set the weather to standard, some standard stuff, um, a few clouds and I don't know, nothing, nothing special because we in this, we don't want to compare the Sims. We want to compare the two, um, two 737s. Okay, then back here in Napoli in Microsoft Flight Simulator with the same plane, basically, the uh, PMDG 737. Yes, it looks very nice. It is at least uh, on par with the with the Zebo. I think it's a little bit better, but this could be because there's a lot of difference in the um, graphics of the, of the sim the the um, i'm not talking about uh, the environment which of course looks way nicer um i'm talking about the, the the model itself the model itself is just one thing the textures are just one thing but the way the sim the graphics engine is calculating everything is of course has an impact on like the reflections are done how the lighting is done if it's a physics based rendering and all that this is why this in my opinion looks a little bit better i think the the, the model and the textures are on par there's no getting around that this looks very very good and uh yeah let's hop on into the cockpit and see what it's like to start it up okay then let's get inside and um yeah texture wise ah uh, yeah it's it's a little bit better it's it's a little bit better i have to say about the topic of getting back into the 737 the Zebo is really great for that, or if you want to learn it at all for the first time, because the Zebo helps you a lot with that. What you can do, you have this fly pad here, which is really cool. I mean, the graphics are not that great, but it's it's totally okay. It's, I, I like it. It's great. And you have a section here that says checklist and procedures. And here you can do pretty detailed checklists. And the great thing about that is you can see that battery switch is now flashing and if you 
go up here, you can see they point with an arrow on where the item is that you have that you have to check now. So you close this. And then the other cool thing is that it's an actual checklist, which mean which means I can check the item. It's not just there and then yeah, you have to check it in your head or whatever. You can actually check it here, like yeah, the checklist should be. Yeah, as you can see, there is no flypad here. Um, the reason for that is that you operate everything, that you set up everything via this FMC. What I said, or how to learn the 737. They kind of put the same trick here. You can see you have an, an extremely um, detailed checklist. It's not really a checklist because you cannot check it. And this is what I meant with the with the Zebo. I can actually check the item. But they do the same trick in terms of they showing you where the battery switches. The thing is just that this arrow vanishes as soon as the actual thing comes into place. Like uh, what is that? No, here, here. Turn it on. I don't. I don't know. There's no difference here in. How do I know that it's well, okay? Never mind. You can see then this is so you are pointed in the direction, but it's not like the arrow is directly pointing on the item like it is in the in the Zebo. Then it's a little bit worse. What's better is that um, you are immediately pointed in the right direction. You don't have to look around and see where is the arrow that I am looking for. You are really pointed in the right direction. Ah, it must be here somewhere, must be here somewhere, and then it, ah, okay, there. Next is, of course, GPU or APU. And we don't have any ground power available. Okay, ground services. Set chokes, please. GPU connect. Then you say GPU connect. And then, ta-da, it is available. And then you can turn it on. And now you have to, um, get your GPU, which is not here at the moment, via this FMC. Okay. Now, one thing that is really, really cool is the way these buttons sound. Okay, this is um, not not an PMDG setup. Here is, um, here is everything that you, for instance, the startup state. I set it to cold and dark because we wanted to start cold and dark. There are options, color, simulation performance, all that stuff, um, aircraft option, what equipment is this um, fitted with, all that. But what we are actually looking for is um, flight some actions and ground services. And there's the GPU card, and then you click request, and then they connect the... You can see here, here's your wheel shocks, and um, now we should, like... Yeah, we should have a GPU. And we can, this beeping will go away. Go on this. Ground power here. On the battery here. And then I think align the nav aids. Um, let's put this there. Let's put the strobe light to steady. Logo can go on. Okay, then let's see what is our altitude for today. 340. And the destination altitude from our airport is... Ah, that brings me to another item. I installed the Avi tab. And I think you can here now go to airport. We are going to... And then I think if you... How when? How was it? No, here? Yes. Airport briefing, airport info takeoff, minimums, and so forth. Ah, I think we get the elevation from here somewhere. Elevation 989. So that should be okay. So let's put in a thousand here. And then we are done for now with this, I think. Again, you can go through, through the checklist. And again, the great thing is it takes you step by step through this entire thing. If you want to learn the 737, this is the perfect way, in my opinion. And now we can... This is already on ground power, and then we can align our IRS. Yeah, and then basically do the same thing that we just did in the Zebo.
then we can start with the flight preparation. Okay, enter IRS position. Yes, nav data position in each. Okay, our ref airport is Lima, India, Romeo, November. And our gate is 14. Okay. And then we can copy that and copy that. And then we should be good. Okay. All right. The first thing that we have to do is to get our ref in it. We are at L I R N. End gate 14. And then we take that and copy it to here. And then we are done with that. Next thing would be to set up our Lima, India, Romeo. Oopsie daisy, it's still in there. And we're going to Lima, India, Mike Foxtrot. The number is the same, it's uh, Romeo Yankee Romeo 874. Oh wait, can I not load the flight plan? Is it a company route, not in database? Okay, I googled it shortly. Um, oh, flight number is uh, Romeo Yankee Romeo 874. And you have to, now I uh, checked this, you have to type the flight plan name or the file name of the flight plan zero one valid entry or do I have to oh jeez no well it's in the correct folder I checked on that well, then that doesn't work as of now, as it would seem. But not a big problem because, as you can see here, you have a roots and you can type. Wait. If you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it tells you. We use the one from Simrifo, but this is this is another neat feature of this tablet that you can, if you don't want to use Simrifo, or if, if you don't have Simrif, you can just get your route from here. Okay, now runway, Simrif says we're departing from 24. So that's what we need, I think, first. 24. Okay, activate. Then let's go next page via C. That's a bit cumbersome, to be honest. Now I have to look. So our only waypoints are Alex C. Gaikin and Jen. Um, oh, right, this one. And now. This is what I said in the in the Zebo 737. Now you can, if you save your flight plan, you can look and then you can see there it is. I think this is the one. Okay. Uh, let's hope this is correct. Let's select this one and uh, request it. We're not done yet. You have to select it. You have to request it. Now you have to wait, I think. Then you have to load, then you have to wait again before it's loaded. And then you have to activate it. And now you have it. Um, runway is 24. Okay, a few balance. Let's say we have, so Simbrief says, 138 passengers and 3.4 tons of cargo. Payload is in kilograms. Okay. Ah, no, we have here. Okay, I think that was everything here. Now let's get back into the fun part. Here. Fuel. Okay, Simbri says 6862. 
and passengers uh, we have to return and then payload okay okay let's say 12 that leaves us then with 108 in the economy Five hundred and one thousand five hundred. I think we have everything that we need. Departure arrival here. Departure. Runway twenty four active, and then we're using the Alexi Seven. Uh, what was it called? Ah, that's not good. The Alexi Seven J departure. Hmm, looks like it's not in the database. Hmm. No, the, the Alexi, that's the one that we're supposed to use. Tiano, turn this to plan, and then... Why, why doesn't this work? Huh? Ah, okay. Well, too bad then. It was Alexi 7J, so let's try the T6J. That looks like uh, it does on some brief. Good! Wow! I remember something. Okay, so let's see. Where are we? Alexi. And now it should be okay. Jen. Okay, then let's... To the arrival, we are doing the. We are landing on ILS that's 36, and we're using the Gen arrival, Gen 3A. There it is. And a transition? No. No transition. Execute. Let's check that again. Wait, what was going on there? Why is Gemma in here twice? Hmm? Sora, Malfoy, Vinho, T, Alexi, Gaikin, Jen, Esther, Top, Ursep, and then into the runway. That was kind of the hardest part. I think we need to set the departure first. It was... Oh boy, what did we use? TG. Okay. Exactly. Let's let's see if the legs are correct. By the way, we imported the flight plan. I didn't set up everything now. T, and then we go to Alexi. Yeah. Okay. N S I. What did we use? I L S Z thirty six last time, and then Gen. And uh, that's it. Okay, and this should now be reflected in our legs. Okay, and there's the... Okay. So, okay, so this means our route should now look basically the same as it did before. Go back to page... See? One. One. Stepping out is in gear, it's not exactly the same, but it's somewhat the same. And then S to on top, E to F E, and then into that. We need to set our performance correctly. Okay. So we are fully loaded. Fuel weight and balance. Oh, wait, the view is wrong. 6868. Eight. Okay, this is not taken over because. Need to call a fuel truck? Maybe? That's the reason? Yes! Ah, okay. Okay, now we need to wait until this is done and then... Because this will give us a different uh, center of gravity here and then... Now, oh, 4600. Cost the next. Ooh, good point. 35. Mm. Cruise altitude is of course three four zero two six eight at five three. Although this will not really be applicable because we're using default weather. Six point nine. Um. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, reserves zero point zero. Unable to unable cruise altitude. Eh? <laughs> okay. 
then you get a reserve of 0 0.1. But uh, let's execute this one. Then we should see our speed bugs. Yeah, fine. Flaps 5. Center of gravity is should know that. Yes, very nice. Trim 5. Um, and then there are our speed bugs. Cool. Then flight level is 360. 270 at 55. I think due to my uh, manual weather, it won't be correct. Okay, 6.9. Yes, and then we should get our uh, weights. This should be... Hmm. Okay, reserves 0 0.1. Other than that, it's mad. Okay, next page. No, 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 no. That's good. And limit... Sure. Flaps 5, and there's our speed box. Um... Correctly, 4.79, different calculation, but we have way less passengers on board than in the other flight. Um, so the trim, wait, how, how did that work? Uh, it was eight, already is at five. Trim, four point, what was it? Seven, nine, okay. Ah, close enough. I want to set up this panel and the Boeing throttle quadrant has a way to dial, to use these dials directly on the throttle quadrant. But 146... But, um... Yeah, apparently, um... Okay, that would have been easier the other way around. Can I drag it? Ah, okay, that's nice. Perfect. Two, three, four, and let's dial it in here as well. Okay, altitude I'm going directly to our um, cruise. Although it's not really that important because we're using LNAV and VNAV. I hope everything works out. Sometimes it doesn't, so it's good to have this in here. Okay, now we are set up here. We can turn the flight directors on. Let's set up this panel. What was it? Two, three... Can I do the same here? Ah, I want to demonstrate something. Right. I talked about my Boeing throttle quadrant, and I talked about, like, you have this... You have this dial. Like, these dials, these rotary dials here that you have. You have them on, you have one of them on your, on the Boeing throttle quadrant and you have a rotary dial to choose what you want to put in. Like I'm currently on heading and now I'm turning, turning and you can see how it changes the heading. Like what was it? Two, three, six. And I can turn it now to altitude, and then I can turn it. It's really weird. You have to turn it slow, and then it goes faster. If, you if I turn it fast, really fast, nothing, nothing much happens. But if I turn it slowly, it's pretty neat. Okay, and then um, do we have our speed box already? Oh, yes, we do. Um, let's... Yeah, and then I can put it onto speed, and then I can dial in 150. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, this texture quality is really good. It's it's a little bit better, I have to say. As first, I'm going to turn on the uh, beacon light, and then I'm going to start the APU. And for that, of course, we need the fuel pumps coming to life. There you can see it. And I'm leaving these fuel pumps off because we have no um, no fuel in the center tank. Um, you can't really see it here. Oh, yes, you can here. There's no fuel in the center tank. So that's why I'm 
if I would turn them on, I think that would um, cause a warning or error or something like that. Uh, okay, APU stabilizers. APU gens on the bus. Let's go to the APU here. And let's go to the APU here. And then let's turn off the ground power. Yeah, let's disconnect the ground power. The, 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 the ground service. GPU disconnect. And then we will remove the shocks as well. Yeah, let's let's remove them. Um okay, of course, these go on. These go on. And I turn on these guys. And APU bleed. The packs stay off for now because if you want to uh, to start the engines, we need. I think, if I'm correct, you have to uh, turn off the. Then you can remove the stairs. Oh, okay, they close the door and then they remove the stairs. Next would be to start up the APU. Now we can check just as in we have nothing in the center tank. It's enough to turn on these guys and then we should be able to start the APU. Okay, then we can go to the APU bus here and to the APU here. We can turn off the ground power unit. We can remove the oopsie daisy. We can release the ground power unit. Is you going away? And the next step would be to um, bum, 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 turn on the beacon light. Beacon light is on. Let's call for pushback. How do you call for pushback? Ah, better pushback. Uh, is it really that much better? Hmm. Doesn't seem to work. <sighs> okay, that's that's not. That's not very good, to be honest. So let's um, then let's cheat. Let's start engine number two. Ooh, he sound nice. Oh, okay, twenty-six percent. Let's. Add fuel to them. Start with open. Boink. There is engine number one. No, that was engine number two. Let's do the same trick with engine number one. Wait, twenty five per cent here. Start with open. Ding, 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 ding. Turn on the APU bleed. And then I think we are ready for pushback. Let's see if we can have a pushback. Pushback request accepted. Neat! I forgot something. Whoopsie daisy. Okay, then let's start engine number one. Okay, let's see. Or oh, number two. So remember how this works. 
Start with open. 25% N2. Me, 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 me. Don't hear as much. The Zibule sounded better. Oh. Okay, there's 25%. Then we should see N1 rising. Yep. Oh. No? Yes. Good. Oh, right. Then I say this is one good engine start. And then let's do the same oopsie daisy with engine one. Start with open. Twenty five per cent. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm now magically standing somewhere near the taxi line. No idea how that happened. Taxi line, do you return light? The ice, we don't need it, so let's check our checklist uh, before taxi. <laughs> Okay, then let's taxi. Then we see this guy the next time we are at the runway. These go to continues as we, as we learned. We're going to the generators here, and to the generators here, and to this generator here. We can turn this off, and we can turn this off. And we can turn this guy on. And the lead off the valve go to auto, the packs go on. Ooh, noisy. Fuel pumps are on, this is on, okay. Yeah. Then this looks good, then let's do some taxi preparations. Flaps to take off position. RDO for the auto brake. LNF and VNF. And we are rolling. Okay, then let's see. Take off before entering the runway. Departure, runway correct. Entering the runway, strobe light on. Other lights as needed. Transponder, T-A-R-A. T-A-R-A. Strobe lights, okay. Other lights as we'll needed. Off in just a few minutes. Flight is in this place for cabin for departure. Okay. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. Okay. 
Then let's taxi. Much nicer here, the sensitivity. I can control it a little bit better. Looks way more deserted than in the X plane. Just one plane over there. And one plane over there, and there's some. Huh. Ah, close enough. Turn, let's turn the landing lights on. Fuel bombs are on, address are on. This is on, this is on, this is on. Do you want to buy this one? Hmm, okay. Okay, then let's get to about 40% and then Toga Rotate. Rotate. it. Gear up. If I can find it. Okay. Let's hand fly her a little bit. Very nice. Okay, let's bring the flaps in. Flips two. Flips one. And flips up. Good. Let's make a turn here. Okay. Start this clock. And then let's go to like 40%. And ah, looks good. Huh. They're in sync. What do you know? And then. We. Oui. 101 is a little bit too much. Cross checked. V1 rotate. Rotate. Gear up. Okay, going directly in the turn, and this is Napoli. Huh, what do you know? A nice town. Not too high, please. I was distracted by the beautiful city of Napoli there. Okay, I have to make a turn. Okay, let's bring the flaps in. And 
then let's try to activate the autopilot. That's not always very easy. Auto thrust must be armed. And now it should take control over the speeds. Everything that is in here. LNAV, VNAV, all that stuff. If you set this up correctly here, then um, you can use LNAV, VNAV. And uh, yeah, let's try to activate the autopilot and the auto thrust. LNAV, VNAV is active. Command, does it work? Yes, it seems to work. Okay. Well, it seems to work. Ah, damn. It's also not in the checklist. Yep. All right. Transition altitude is 8,000. Let's go back to standard. Hmm, okay, didn't say. Standard here, standard there, and standard there. Okay, 10,000 feet. Let's turn Ladies this guy off. Let's climb to our cruising altitude. Let's extend a special thank you to each of you. And a welcome back to our SkyMall members and million milers. Your business and loyalty are greatly appreciated by the entire Delta family. For your safety, it's important to remain seated with your seatbelt securely fastened anytime the seatbelt sign is on. Even if the sign is off, please keep your seatbelt fastened in case we experience any unexpected rough air. We ask that you also please remember to use caution if opening the airport. Oh, that's a Vesuv. Didn't see it last time. That's a volcano. Okay, above 10,000. Let's clean up the airplane. This can go off. This can go off. Okay. Cool. Wow. It looks so good. Damn. I have a 737 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is so nice. Left here, turn, and then we turn towards north up here. You should turn any second now. I think it's okay now. I think what we can do now is I think we can have a look at the cabin. Let's check again. Let's just check the texture quality of the thing. Is the reading light or whatever? Um, mm, not very good. Mm, that's okay. I mean, nobody really looks there. Uh, it's okay. That looks good. 
texture quality up here is quite good. I say it's really good. Um, I always like that these displays have like a certain purple glow. It's it's going to be really visible at night. Um, also for these guys here, you don't see it now, but you can see it here, the, the clock. Yeah, that looks that looks really really nice. Well, texture quality is pretty good, I have to say. Okay, then let's um check out the interior cabin. Wow, I so need to do some night flights with this to see how this looks at night. I think it probably looks really great. Um, hey, cool. Can hear some passenger chatter. Ah, no. Okay. <laughs> they they got something on their screen. They don't. Okay, we're not climbing at an alarming rate here at the moment, so I can turn the seatbelt signs off. But I say while we're climbing, let's take a tour through the cabin. Okay, in here, oh boy, that does not look as good, uh, no, this looks a little bit like in the Zebo, that's not, not that much better, uh, what is that, uh, um, but it's the same arrangement as you can see, you have this first class or whatever, do they have a screen as well, hint, 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 hint. yeah, indeed, they have. So I say this is on par with the Zebo. Like there's not a big difference. Like these textures are basically similar, not pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. And texture quality is good. I've seen worse. Like, let's let's say, let's be real here. The totals look way worse. Um, but again, it's just a passenger cabin. I mean, you're not here that often. Well, let's take this in for a while.
this, this looks a little bit different though. Was in the in the Z world was the arrangement was different. And of course this thing wasn't here. Okay. One hundred and eight point seven. Eight point seven. Okay, I can use the mouse, I cannot use the keyboard. I cannot move, I cannot change my position. No view. Uh, maybe this thingy is the ah there's something on here. As it would seem. Ah, uh, okay. So if you cannot use your keyboard anymore, then it's probably a good idea to close this thing up. Ah, uh, now it works again. Okay, wow. That's a strange bug. Okay, let's set the barrels. And you can, of course, see that. Um, Z runway is 36. Okay, let's look for the barrels. Okay, um, so that's 1034. Barrel is. Yeah, never mind. 1034. Okay. Um, radio altimeter, uh, that's 106. Oh, okay, then let's use 106. Okay. Okay, we're nearing the top of descent now. I think. What is it? 80, 40. Okay, let's do some preparations for landing. Now there's a little bit of it's a little bit more difficult here than it is in um in the Zebo because I have the Navigraph charts but not in an app here. Okay, I got in this frequency, this is correct. The barrels radio what is it? Radio was a hundred and Six, I think. Okay, they're different here. Interesting. 11.44, 2.10. They're different in the app than they are in the, the Evi tab. Well, never mind. 11.44 and 2.10. Okay, so radio is 2.10. Barrow is 11.44. Okay. Okay, we are at the top of descent. Hmm. Doesn't seem like it's engaging the descent on its own. Put in the 4000 here. Nope. Nope. Okay. No, doesn't do anything. Hmm. Okay, then we have to do it manually. Let's um, tell the people to go back to their seats. Okay, now we're descending. Where's the top of this? Where's our line? Uh, yes. It's around Herb somewhere. Hmm, okay. Okay, we descend to... And... Um, runway elevation 934. And runway length 3300. And we are now at our top of descent and the airplane is descending. Okay, one thing that we have to do, that's very important, okay, 136, 40, so that's what we type in here, it's going to be our speed here. I forgot this. Alright, 3300 meter, 8, 000, ah, there it is. Okay, and 40, 134. 
I forgot this in our landing preparations. This is important. Okay. It's not losing speed. Okay. 181 at Ursa. Um, I just... 5800 at top 9 miles. I'm not sure if this is because we are below weight. We are below 10,000 now, which means whoopsie daisy. Should turn our nose lights on and our landing lights. Let's use auto brake 3 because I do not have reversers. Ah, uh, right. Standard, 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 it's the same, but anyway, it will just rest the engines now. It tries to keep 320. Ah, it's on speed mode, I am so That's sorry. Now there's the problem. Okay, getting to 10,000, let's... Seatbelts on... Landing lights on... Um, can I turn on VNAV? Because it actually should chase the speed itself, 181. Flips 2... Okay, let's go... Oops, flips 5... Flaps 15 and 156, exactly. There it is now chasing the correct speed. Okay, it looks good. Oh, this is already the glide slope and this is already localizer. and nine miles and 2,300 feet altitude. I say you're coming way too fast. Okay, I'm going to flaps one. Apparently I'm already at flaps five. Doesn't matter. Hundred and sixty six in your draft hundred and forty eight flaps fifteen. And let's lower our landing gear. I we should capture the glide slope uh, but it's coming down already oopsie daisy and let's go to approach mode and then let's go to what can we go for we can go flaps full Okay, please capture the localizer. 143 flaps full. Please capture the localizer. Sinking to 4000. 139. Please get below the glide slope. This is all figured out. Okay, arm um, the approach. 
I have to because otherwise I'm not getting below it. The aircraft absolutely refuses to descend here. It but we are aligned with the runway. Hey, look, there's a stadium. And we are on a glide slope and we are on a localizer. Okay, approach mode is active, we have mode is active. Auto brake is set. This is all active. 141, now it's setting these. Why is my glide? Why is my localizer completely off? The airport is over there. What? It's on the glide slope, but not on the localizer. Hey? Okay, I think I did something wrong. Okay, let's... Disengage the autopilot. Oh boy. Tend to it ourselves. That's not so good. Just once, I mean, want to make a normal landing. Just once. The ref speed is, by the way, 136. Ah, I missed something. I missed something. I think I armed the approach mode too early. Not on the glide slope, not on the glide slope. Again, not on the glide slope. I mean, I'm on the glide slope, not on the localizer. No, I'm not on the glide slope either. Oh boy. Watching too much on the runway, not as much on the on the instruments. I'm still too high. Okay. Wow, I'm really close to these buildings. Oh, never mind. Now I'm too low. That's good. Flight slow. 500. Yes, slow. I'm below the glide Flight slope. Slow. Sorry for that. I'm an absolute noob. Yes. Approaching minimums. That's good. One minimum. Continue. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Okay. Don't have any reversers. Don't know if I talked about that, but. So it's, that's why I put the speed brake to 3. I'm not losing speed, not at all. Eighty knots. Ooh, very good. <laughs> okay, landing without reversers is not really good. Um, okay. Even with auto break three. <sighs> okay. But we made it. Welcome to Torino, everyone. Oh 
Okay. Okay, familiar sight. Let's see how we manage in the PMDG. Okay, that means... Autopilot off. Traffic. Traffic. What is you babbling about? Last time it was too high. Okay, it feels different. Again, I get this weird delayed input. The, my 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 instructions on my input is like a little bit more. Yes, there's a greater effect to my input, but I still have this weird. Approaching minimum. Weird uh, delay. Minimums. One hundred. Fifty. Thirty. Okay, ground effect. Twenty. Ten. And touchdown. Very nice. Okay, again, no reversers, unfortunately, but hmm, losing speed way more than in the Zebo with the same auto brake. Uh huh, interesting. Very interesting. That's a huge difference. Okay. Very strange. But nice landing. Welcome to uh, Torino again. Hmm, okay, that was a um, nice landing. A really huge difference to the Phoenix A320. Man. Of course, it's a difference between, because it's, this is a 737 and the Phoenix is an A320. But I had more control over the aircraft. I was feeling that my inputs were doing a lot more or like my inputs had more effect on the airplane than the, the in the Phoenix A320. I still have this weird delay. I still had, I still felt like I was more in control of the aircraft. Or I still had more control over the aircraft in X plane than here. But it's a huge step up over the Phoenix in in like what I can what I feel this the airplane is doing. As usual, not exactly a smooth landing. Um, okay, let's see. Um, taxi light goes on, landing lights go off, stroke go to steady, low light can go on. The collisions are on, real light real can go off. That's all fine, I think. Um, okay. Let's uh, turn taxi lights on, landing lights off, logo lights on, lights off, anti-collision can stay on, strobes go to oopsie daisy. No, they were actually correct. Steady. Huh. There is everybody. Okay. That's good enough for me. Let's put on the parking brake.
Okay, let's park here. Turn on these, turn off these guys. Is the APU running? Yes. Then we go to the APU generator here. Go to the, A go to the APU generator here. Um, turn off these guys. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We don't really... Do we need the APU bleed? No, we open the things. And um, then... Bam, 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 turn this off. This can stay on. And then let's do this. And this. That should actually power out. Power down our engines. Don't really need the packs, we open the doors right away. Okay, fasten seatbelt signs can go off. This can go off. And uh, okay. Again, welcome to Torino, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this flight. Um, I will think. Wait, can we go ground services? Set the jokes. Set the GPU and uh, extend the stairs. And open the doors, I think. Question is which ones? Hmm. Ground power available. Let's turn on the ground power, turn off the APU generator, turn off the APU. So do we have stairs now? No. Okay, target zero. And then D plane. Indeed. And now they're D board. That's awesome. Can I do the same with the zero here? Unload. Zero here. Unload. Start. Okay, still no stairs. Never mind. So, um, yeah, uh, that was the flight in the. Um, in the Zebo, uh, the good old Zebo, yeah, there was a lot of things that were not so good. I have, I still have no rudder, but that's not the problem of the Zebo. That's the problem of the Zim and me not having rudder pedals. I think this this controlling the plane is still amazing to me every time how good that works in X plane. Like with this landing, I had so much control over the plane. This is always very very impressive to me. Yeah, the plane's fine. I mean, it looks good, it sounds good, it does everything that it should. It's not its fault that it's part of a pretty ugly world. Um, again, we're not, I'm not getting back into the uh, simulators and how they look. The plane itself looks good, it has, uh, that's not it. Textures are good, model is good, um, really good in my opinion. I mean, see these screws and everything in here, that looks really, really good. Um, yeah, it will be a tough challenge for the um, PMDG 737. Now, before I get to my uh, conclusion, I just wanted to start with how absolutely happy I am that we have a really good working proper 737 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Something like the Zebo 737, something that has the same level of detail where everything was working, where the cabin was pretty nice, where you could import your Zim brief. This is absolutely amazing. This widens my range of flights that I want to do, will do, and can do, and it's it's making me really, really, really happy. But that cannot influence my decision. And I have to say, I have to give it to the Zebo. The Zebo has the fly pad. It's better to use. It's, it's, it has the better quality of life features with the, with, the, with the fly pad. Having an actual checklist. And you have to keep in mind, the Zebo is free. If you're just interested in a 737, you can get X-Plane for 60 bucks and then get your Zebo 737 for free. If you want to have the PMDG 737 in this the Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think you have to at least invest 60 bucks in the Flight Simulator, and then you put in the 737 for 70. 
Again, the PMDG is, gets me way, way more excited than the Zebo. In terms of simulation, it's definitely on par with the Zebo. Everything works. You have, you have additional features that I didn't, I didn't even talk about. Like you have a head-up display, for instance. That, that I, I didn't even talk about that. I, I, don't, I didn't really feel any need to talk about that. It's, to me, it's a little bit... I mean, you see it's dark and everything up, and then you get this bright... To me, it's more distracting than, than helping, but it's in here. You have lots, a lot of options. They are pretty neck-on-neck, neck, both of these planes. But I think all things considered, the winner here, the recommendation here, is clearly the Zebo 737. Yeah, then I, I'm going to enjoy this um, beautiful evening here in Torino. I'm going to leave you with this, and I'm going to talk to you in the next one. Take care and uh, tschüss.